No. All right, we're here with Down Coast after they just, they just played their set at the Shredder on Thursday. So, uh, first things first, how has the addition of Stargle really affected the band dynamic? Is it at all? Stargle's kind of difficult to work with. He's a bit of a menace in in the studio. Um, we have about a quarter of the productivity we used to have, but it's it's worth it just to have him on the team. Sounds like a sounds like a troublemaker. Yeah, but you know that's just how he is. Cool guy. Do any does anyone else have anything to add about our buddy Stargle? <laughs> uh, no, no, no comment. No comment on Stargle. Sensitive subject. Sensitive. So, yeah, sensitive subject. So, what do you guys think of the Tree Fort crowd this year? A lot more people saw us this year than last year. I, th you guys noticed that too, yeah. right? Yeah. That was the turnout was a lot greater than last year for yeah. sure. It was very that, that was awesome to see, really encouraging. So. Yeah. so. Oh my god. Okay, so that was just uh, the last song, the debut of a new song that you guys just, you know, yeah. Uh, so that was the debut of a new song. Uh, what was the songwriting process of that? Like, did one person write it, or was it a collaborative effort, or what's up with that? So that's actually a song that I, I wrote the basis of when I first got FL Studio, like three years ago, at the beginning of the pandemic, and I was like, oh, I should just write something quick to just test out the program. So I wrote that, and then I forgot about it for like two years, and then I remembered about it again. I was like, oh, this is actually really good. So then I, I brought it into the band, and we kind of uh, iterated on it from there. Nice. Oh. So like, who even are you guys? We don't even know. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't know. We just kind of showed up here. I don't know who any like, of these, uh, these dudes people that, like, are. Make noise together, oh, I, yeah. I guess. It's kind of it's up in the air. Nice. So I haven't decided yet. Yeah. Not, not in like a weird way. No, 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 no. <laughs> or in a very weird way. Honestly. Okay. I think that's everything. Just do it. <laughs> okay, we've got one. We've got one more. I want your th top three, each of you, top three cartoon baddies of all time. Just hand down the phone. Yeah, Hex, hand hex down girls. Down. Hex Girls from Scooby-Doo. That's the immediate answer for me. <laughs> oh, fuck, bro, I don't know. Top three? You said top three cartoon baddies? Bruh. Mrs. Incredible. Um, Mrs. Incredible takes the first two. And then... Um, Judy Hopps. <laughs> Officer Jenny. Nah, bro. <laughs> Nurse Joy. Yeah, okay. Uh, Nurse Joy, Nurse Joy. And Cynthia, you know, from the Elite Four from the Sinnoh games. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. true. Yeah. It's just the Pokemon characters. <laughs> Someone nice. here hasn't given their top three cartoon <laughs> baddies. No comment. No comment. I'll take it. <laughs> Whatever. We got nine at least. That's, That's good, good enough. enough. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for coming on our interview and doing this and... Uh, being thank in our, our video yeah, that we're going to release, so, yeah. yeah. Thank you for having us.
We're here with Crush the Monster. Um, we just listened to their set, it was awesome. Um, we have some questions for them. Everyone introduce yourselves first. I'm Mike. I'm Liam. I'm Kale. I'm Carson. <laughs> I'm Cameron. I'm gonna drop that phone. <laughs> oh. Yikes. You're asking the first question, right? No. No, I am. Okay, well. <laughs> uh, so, your album is coming out next month. You guys have announced that. Uh, who are the primary songwriters, or is it like an even collaborative effort with all you guys? Well, for the this particular album that's coming out this month, we all we all were very uh, equally a part of the the songwriting process. I would like to say we wrote it in a garage. Uh, yeah, anyone else? Yeah, it was lots of like pieces and parts of all different people being put together. Um, uh, we had another member at the time who helped a lot too. It's very spread out and even writing process, I think. Yes. You can like kind of tell because we each song in there kind of has a different feel to it. You can kind of tell like who took over most of like the writing process or kind of started that song over. Um, and you can notice that a lot in this new record because there's a lot of different sounds and flavors you could find in there. Yeah, for sure. It's not the most continuous, like, from a genre perspective. We all put our own flair on it, for sure. I think that record kind of came about as a, just open jams, you know, in the garage, and we were kind of cutting our teeth as a band at the time. We didn't really know what we wanted to be. We just wanted to play music together, and that's just kind of what this record's about, you know? It's just us having, fr like, having fun with the homies, really. What do you guys think about the Treefort crowds this year? What? Crowds. I mean, they're great. It, they're great every year. It's cold. It's a lot colder than it has been the last like three tree forts, but uh, uh, it's been cold. Good crowds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm kind of surprised on how many people are like spread around the city. I feel like the locations and the stages are a lot more spread out than they used to be. And so, I don't know, like it's really interesting to be at all the shows and see uh, the, the different kinds of people that go out to those, you know? I think that's all. <laughs> Next question. You guys need to pass? <laughs> all right, this is the most important question that I'm gonna ask you guys right now. Top three cartoon baddies, each of, <laughs> each of you. I'm gonna, we should go down the line and say one at a time. How about that? Yeah. Like, okay, I got Marceline from Adventure Time. Uh, Gary the Snail. <laughs> Not in an animal way. <laughs> Choose your words yeah. the, the, That Scooby Doo band. The, the Hex Girls. The Hex Girls, yes. Jimmy's Ma'am. Dude, um, fuck. What was that show with the. Uh, Oh, Dan! It was like Danny, Va Dunk, uh, Danny Phantom. Danny Phantom. What oh, that, yeah. that that lady? The lady in that one. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Also, also, I gotta say, uh, um, you know, I lost it actually. Here you go. Oh, I got another. Um, Cora from the Legend of Cora. Okay. Fair. Anyone else got any ones to shout out? Yeah, shout out to Caleb. Shout out to this guy. I got one. My life is a teenage robot. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? I got one. I know. Okay, I got one. I think that's more than. Wait, are we still on the cart? Are we still on the cartoon question? Yeah. In a very respectful way, Margaret from Regular Show. Oh, nice. Cool. I think that's a good it's good. Cartoon yeah. yeah. I think that was that was a few more than three collectively, but I think it it averages out, you know. Yeah, I think, yeah, totally. yeah. Cool. Well, thank you guys for coming on and doing this interview and a great set. And we're excited for the rest of Treeport. Thank you. Thank you, Boise Underground Media. Treeport.
Okay, we're here with Neocentrics. Everyone introduce your names. Uh, I'm Evan. I play guitar and I sing. My name's Wyatt. I play bass. I'm Quinn. I play guitar. My name's Randy and I play drums. There is another Wyatt, but he couldn't make it to the interview. I want everyone to know that. He plays keys and such. All right. So our first question, how have the recent uh, the changes to your lineup affected like the band's dynamic uh, when you guys are playing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Randy is like a very powerful drummer, very raw. Um, so I think that's made things a little more like energetic. And Quinn is a very more like textured guitar player. You know, he, he adds a lot of these like cool like leads, like very pretty, very like, ooh, yeah, that sounds nice, you know? So. I might even say shoegazy. Became a little bit more shoegazy. A little bit, a little bit, but yeah. What do you guys think of the Tree Four audience this year? Um, oh man, that's a big question. Um, I think there are, it's it's good to see all the local bands out and about, but it's also been cool like getting to meet some uh, friends from touring bands, new and old. Um, you know, just getting to hang out and see everyone sets. I think that's been really cool. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been a fun time so far. Like even just like fresh off off of our set today, I thought it was like fun just to get some like crowd interaction. Like there's a lot of people that were just like kind of like head bopping like with us or like linking arms and like spinning around. Like it feels like a pretty like energetic time. And like overall, it seems like everyone's been enjoying their tree fort. Yeah, uh, I'll also just say the turnout is amazing. Like, uh, the main stage is packed, right, like, all the time, but then you can go to the bus station, which is super far away, and there's you're going to still see a really good crowd over there, and so that's been really, really nice. I think the uh, – and the energy from the audience has been really awesome. So I haven't been to one show where I'm like, ah, like, it's been good all around, so I love it. So you guys were recently on KTVB Channel 7, the news. How was that? Tell us a little bit about that whole experience. Fun. Um, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was interesting. I felt like kind of like a fish out of water, you know, because I was like, oh, my gosh, I've seen this same news studio in my house every morning for the past 10 years. So it was a little surreal. Um, I mean, yeah, it was it was a it was a fun time. The sound people there don't know how to mix a band, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's it's like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say I think it's I think it's really uh, weird being in there because okay, if you've never been in there and you watch the news, you kind of don't realize. Uh, what the room looks like, I can't, obviously. Yeah. Uh, it's really cool. Whoever the weather lady is, I'm sorry that I don't know her name off my top of my head. She's, like, talented. Like, do you realize she just stands in front of this green thing, yeah, screen, green thing. and there's she doesn't actually have a map there, you know? She's, like, she just has to, like, put her hands at the right place, and it's crazy. It's so, um, no, but uh, it was really cool. Uh, what's his name? It was nice. Doug. They're always named Doug. They're always named Doug, so yeah. anyway, that's all I have, I think. Yeah. All right, here we go. Is back down? That way. Other way. Okay. Okay. Is it still recording? Ah! No, it's not. Oh. Finished. We got that on, a <laughs> on the phone. Okay. Ah! <laughs> Make up a new band name, individual band names. Uh, <laughs> For fun, fun, yeah. Um, Larry and the Lobsters. <laughs> Patchy Mustache. Bendy Forkball. I'm so bad at this. I'm so bad at band names. I had it. <laughs> gone. It was it was there and now it's gone. Condemn the hats. Whoa. That's a really what good one. Sick. That's a really good band name. I'm not gonna change, lie. Might change leeway to that. 
Well, yeah. Thank you guys for, for doing this interview. We had some very good insight about KTVB and the weather lady. And uh, I, I, I also can't remember her name. And very importantly, like amazing band names across the board. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you for doing this. And yeah. have any plans to record anything soon because like you play shows but nothing on Spotify or anything yet yes, yeah absolutely we have a we have a recording in the works and a little spoiler hopefully by the end of next month we'll have some music out there yep, yep. on all the streaming services yes <laughs> nice that's exciting yeah um, how did you guys meet each other it was summer of 1917, <laughs> Europe, Paris, Texas. We were just out and about, met in a bar, got drunk, thought we should start a band. And we started a band. We're here now. And we're here now. <laughs> a fitting story for a, a band like you guys. I don't know how to say it, how to describe that. Uh, what are all the influences that you guys have? Because you guys have the wildest covers of any band like I've seen. Because like Rotten Apple Trees, they did Folsom Prison Blues by Johnny Cash, but you guys do like everything. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, what are the influences that go into your sound? We like all the spooky stuff. Yep. So we have influences from Primus to Bikini Kill to Iggy Pop mm -hmm. and Alice Cooper. We like to be extra. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe a little bit of Black Sabbath too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We're spooky rock. We'll take all the spooks. Oh, and the Hex Girls. Oh my gosh, yes. Hex Girls. Yeah. A absolute influence. <laughs> nice. That sounds about right. Who are the primary songwriters of your guys' music? Uh, we all do a little bit. Uh, but I would say, I don't know. We've learned a few of Cat's songs that um, they wrote, what was it, during the pandemic? Yeah, during the pandemic, I wrote a whole lot of fun songs that I always wanted to perform, and, and these guys are okay with it. We have a variety of songs. So the wildest and craziest songs are written by our, our drummer here, Klaus. <laughs> <laughs> this is Franklin, by the way. Yeah, uh, I feel like Klaus has a very Lovecraftian way of writing songs, and I always feel like he's in his own neon green and, and pink laboratory filled with plants when he writes a song, and I feel like that's incredible to have in a band. Also, he's literally insane. Um, <laughs> that helps for some great lyrics. Great exactly. music. It really does. And um, the song we're going to release next month is actually written by Brie here called Pleasure Palace, and it's about the lady uh, owner of <laughs> the Pleasure Boutique that used to be on Fairview, and how she is a gaslight uh, <laughs> gatekeep girl boss. <laughs> Bitch, can I say that? Sorry. Um, <laughs> and I write about hmm, supernatural creatures. I really like supernatural beings and entities, and the TV show. <laughs> And yeah. Yeah. I can actually, that like makes a lot of sense. Like the, 
vibe. The, the vibe. <laughs> the vibe of like everything. And when you say like Lovecraftian writing process, like it makes sense when you hear the music. <laughs> um, who are your favorite movie characters? <laughs> Ash Williams, Evil Dead. <laughs> Ash Williams from the Evil Dead uh, saga. Absolutely. Bruce Gamble is our Lord and Savior. <laughs> At least I say that's for me and, and Klaus all the way. What about you, Brie? Oh my gosh. Uh, man, my favorite movie character? Um, I mean, I love Frankenstein. I don't know if that counts, but... The yeah. doctor or the monster? The monster. Okay. Yeah. It counts. He's <laughs> a cool character in like every single like spooky movie. You know? Yeah, for sure. Hotel Transylvania. Um, <laughs> great yes. cameo. Oh, love right. his work. Love his work. <laughs> love his work. Such a talented actor. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure. yeah. Well, that's all we have. So thank you guys for doing this brief interview. And like, yeah, it was great to hang out with you guys and learn about your favorite movie characters. Yeah. And, thank you for uh, having us. How you us. met. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys for having us. This was fun. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yay. <laughs>